Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel. If you're new and you've never seen a video of mine before, my name is Melissa. I am so excited for today's video because I have not done and updated what I've read recently and I've got quite a few books to talk about with you guys, so I'm pretty pumped. Before we start today's video though, I do want to thank today's sponsor for the video, Book of the Month. You guys know I talk about them so, so much and I work with them so, so much and I would never promote a company that I don't love and I absolutely love Book of the Month, but this week they are offering an awesome, cool special for romance books where you can pick any romance book that is on their website. I will leave all the information down in the description box below so you guys can see what titles they pick. But they're having a special offer this week where if you sign up, you can get a special romance book for only $5 and it is so worth that you guys seriously go do it. One of the books that they're actually offering for this special service is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I have heard nothing but amazing things about Allie Hazelwood and especially The Love Hypothesis. I have not read it yet personally, but it is on my TBR. So I highly recommend that you guys take advantage of this service and keep in mind they're hardcover books, brand new hardcover books for half the price of what you would probably get in store. So if you guys are interested in it, make sure to use the code SPICY at checkout and you can get a selected romance book title for only five dollars thank you book of the month for sponsoring today's video uh but let's get on into the books that i've read recently because there's quite a few all right i've got like a whole list on my phone because i don't have all the books up here with me currently okay so the first book that i want to talk about is truly devious by maureen johnson this book was so so good i gave this book three stars it gives it's a murder mystery book but it's also set at a special academy okay so i'm editing this video back and i just realized that the way that i I, like explained this academy made absolutely zero sense so I'm gonna try and redo it here and hopefully it'll make more sense um but basically these kids go to this academy it's like this special academy and each kid is going to this academy to study things that are like specified towards them so like for example one of the kids is going there to study like a murder mystery like based at the campus and then you know one of them is going there to study like film or like make film so like they go to this school and they get to pick what they get to study and it's very geared towards them so i hope that makes more sense so one of our main characters is a very big murder mystery kind of person she wants to solve the murder that happened at the, at the academy honestly when i read this book and then i watched wednesday on netflix looking back now it gives me massive wednesday adam vibes from netflix so if you guys loved the show Wednesday, I highly recommend reading Truly Devious. It doesn't have anything supernatural in it, but just the whole concept of going to an academy and going for like specific things. And also our main character is trying to solve a crime while on campus. And in Wednesday, she's also doing that. If you guys liked Wednesday, I highly, highly recommend reading Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I think it would be totally up your guys' alley. There is also a little tiny bit of romance in this book. It's not the main plot of it, but it is definitely a subplot. I will say the only thing about this book that I didn't really enjoy too much is the ending of the first book. And I do know that it is in a series. There's, I think there's four or five books in the series. So obviously we'll find more information out as we read the books. But I think for the first book in the series, it just felt unfinished. We, we spent the whole time in the book, you know, figuring out who done it, who done it. And the ending of the book just had nothing to really do with that. And it just kind of, it left you on a cliffhanger, but like not a cliffhanger that like really mattered, if that makes sense. Like it just, it didn't seem, it, it, it the ending was disappointing. I'm gonna be completely honest. The ending was disappointing in my opinion. I felt like something else could have been the ending and the ending of Truly Devious, the first book, just felt very anticlimactic. I definitely recommend reading it if you guys also liked Good Girl's Guide to Murder because it kind of had the same concept of her focusing in school on figuring out the murder. So if you guys liked Wednesday, the TV show on Netflix, and you guys also liked a Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I would highly, highly recommend the Truly Devious series. It would definitely be up your guys' alley. The next book I read is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. I also gave this book three stars as well. This murder mystery book threw me for a fucking loop. Let me tell you. <laughs> I 
thought I knew what was going on in this book and I was like oh yeah I'm connecting the dots I think I know what's going on and then by the end of it I was like wait no I don't I don't have a clue what's going on but the ending was still so cool in the way that like the way that she wrote it was you could partly guess what happened but there was also a twist to it where you were like whoa didn't see that coming that was kind of weird that was kind of cool again i highly recommend this book to anybody who likes murder mysteries i only gave it three stars just because it wasn't one of those murder mystery books where i was like oh my gosh i'm very picky about my murder mysteries too so there's that but i am very excited to read more books by alex feeney i'm kind of hoping i like more of her books and maybe one of them can be a five star read i'm hoping but i've heard nothing but good things about alex feeney so i'm very excited to read more of her books so the next book i read was a santa suit by mary k andrews this book was so adorable on so many levels it gave me gilmore girl vibes like small town everybody knows everybody everybody knows everybody's business type of deal it was so freaking cute it also gave hallmark vibes as well because it was one of those romance books where it was like you know they met they fell in love yada yada, yada. it was so so cute so if you guys are looking i know it's not christmas time anymore but if you guys are looking for kind of like a light-hearted gilmore girl vibe feel to the book i definitely recommend the santa suit by mary Kay andrews it was so cute it was such a fast read as well i read it in one day so i highly recommend that if you're looking for like a good palette cleanser or just something to like maybe even get you out of like a reading slump it was super super fast paced and it was it was just so cute and adorable and i gave that one three stars as well the next book i read i read dance of thieves by mary e pearson i loved this book this book was the first book that i read this year as a fantasy book as well i haven't read a fantasy book in so so long and it just kind of like kick-started my love for fantasy again but i gave this book four stars it is an enemies to lovers kind of feel the banter between the characters is also so addicting jace and kazzy have the most addicting banter back and forth there's also a knife to the throat scene so if y'all are into that uh, i definitely recommend reading dance of thieves because it has a perfect knife to the throat scene there's also just so many cute quotes in this book like the way that jace loved kazzy it was uh it was so so perfect and so amazing and it was also one of those things where it was like she was trying to make him fall in love with her so that she could like finish her mission i'm not going to tell you guys too much about the book because i don't want to ruin it but it was so so good such a cute book um the character development in this is so amazing just the way that mary e pearson talked about the characters and gave the character background it just made them feel so much more human than fictional i haven't read the second book but i've already bought it because i'm so excited to read it but yeah i gave that one four stars i really loved that book honestly if you guys liked six of crows i feel like you're gonna like dance of thieves it kind of has i don't want to say the same feeling to it but the banter between the characters the depth between the characters i feel like is comparable to the depth and banter within six of crows characters so highly recommend it the next book i read uh I this this one I might get a little bit of hate for <laughs> I read corrupt by Penelope Douglas I feel like you either hate or love this book and I feel like there's no in between I didn't really enjoy this book solely because I'm not a huge dark romance person also this dark romance includes a lot of trigger warnings including like rape and sexual assault so that's not really something I like to read about it's not really something I want to hear about or see romanticized or fantasized about so I I don't really know how I feel about this this book yet i know it's in a series and i know you don't get to know all the characters in one book but it just i don't know again like i said i would definitely search up the trigger warnings if you want to read corrupt by penelope douglas penelope douglas is also more of a dark romance kind of writer so if you are in dark romance i would definitely check out penelope douglas there i've only read one other book by her and it was punk 57 and i wouldn't even call that dark romance it really wasn't dark romance but uh that's the only other book by her that i really really liked corrupt also has has an enemies to lovers kind of feel to it it also has the girl going after she dated the younger brother but likes the older brother so there's like the brother trope there i don't know whether or not to finish the series so if anybody has actually read the whole entire series and they weren't so sure about it when they first started but then finished it let me know let me know your opinions on corrupt by penelope douglas let me know if you guys think it's worth finishing whether it's not worth finishing i don't know I, I don't know. I did get pretty I did get through corrupt pretty fast. It is definitely a fast-paced read. Yeah, and like I said, I gave this one two stars. It 
dark romances, it's hit or miss for me. I, nah. I'm a hopeless romantic, so I like reading, you know, the puppy love kind of stuff of romance. But anyways, let's move on to the next book. The next book that I read, I read Unmasked, My Life Solving America's Cold Cases by Paul Holes. I gave this book three stars. I'm a very big, like, true crime reader, but this book had a mix of true crime, like, covering the cases that he's covered, covering, you know, his, like, his whole journey through the criminal justice system, and also just his journey through working his way up the ladder in the criminal justice system, which was really, really interesting to learn about how he became a private detective. But another interesting thing about this book was it also included some like personal anecdotes from his life and like how working within the criminal justice system affected his daily life and also like his life with his family. So it was, it's kind of like a mix between a true crime book and kind of an autobiography. I think that's what it's called, an autobiography or a biography. You guys get the point. I would definitely say to look up the trigger warnings of this. It is true crime, so it is talking about cases and it does go into detail about cases. I'm also pretty sure that this book shows pictures as well. So if you guys are squeamish with that kind of stuff, maybe don't read it. <laughs> but in in terms of a true crime book, it was pretty good. I also liked the whole aspect of him including his personal life in it and how it affected his personal life because I feel like when we read a lot of true crime books, it's either in the point of the view of the victim or it's talking just solely about the case and we aren't really seeing how these cases affect the investigators and I feel like that's a really interesting aspect to criminal justice that we don't see too often and that I feel like we do need to see a little more often because we don't truly understand the impact that this kind of stuff has on people not just the victims but you know the people who are actually trying to get justice for the victims it's very emotionally and mentally taxing and I feel like it really puts into words how majoring in criminal justice is like. I mean like I, I love majoring in criminal justice, absolutely adore it. I think it is the most interesting thing that I possibly could have done in my whole entire life but it is also very mentally taxing because you are hearing some volatile stuff that happens to other human beings that you wish would never happen. And I, I think it's just very important to put into perspective just how horrible this stuff is and how it can affect every single party involved. So that's that book. Again, if you guys like true crime, I highly recommend reading it. I honestly might consider talking about it on the podcast. I haven't done a podcast episode in forever, so maybe I'll have Kate read it and then we can discuss it on the podcast. Um, if that's something that you guys are interested in, in, let me know because I want to bring back the podcast. I've been so busy and I've been so sidetracked with school and life things, but I really do want to bring back the true crime podcast. So let me know. Anyways, let's move on to the next book. The next book I read, I read My Policeman by Beth Ann Roberts. This book gave me emotional whiplash <laughs> and it's the only way I can describe this book because there were so many times in the book where I was like, okay, I can understand where these characters are coming from, but at the same time, I can't justify your actions because some of the things that these characters did in this book, I was like, oh, Oh my gosh but then you think about the time period in which this was happening and mm, again emotional whiplash it threw me for a loop it is so sad it is very frustrating to read there is a love triangle in this it is also kind of focusing a little bit on lgbt struggles especially back in the day like when you know being gay was not considered not okay and this is also set in england i believe so it's not set in the u.s and there were obviously very different societal standards in countries when it came to LGBT and there still are. Do you want to say though the ending felt very unfinished and if anybody has read My Policeman you would probably understand what I mean by unfinished. It just it left it off on a cliffhanger and I know that the author probably did that deliberately to like you know make you think about it but the ending of it just I, I f it felt so unfinished and that's part of the reason why I gave it three stars because I feel like I, I don't know I feel like I would have done better with like a concrete ending of you know what happened what like where are the characters now or maybe even like a bonus chapter or something like that. Anyways, moving on to the next book. The last book that I read recently is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This book, I have a lot to say about this book actually, and it is solely because I am such a Hunger Games fan. And also, can we talk about the fact that the movie comes out this year in November? I'm so pumped. Oh my gosh. My middle school self is coming back, and I don't know whether to be 
slightly traumatized or no i think it's just slightly traumatized in a way <laughs> middle school wasn't a good year but anyways the ballad of songbirds and snakes focuses on the point of view of cornelius snow but it's in the point of view of him as a younger child when he is in the academy and basically the whole plot line of this book is he is becoming a mentor for the 10th annual hunger games and he is the mentor for the girl in the 12th district lucy gray baird and there is a little bit of romance that goes on here I am also convinced Katniss Everdeen is a descent of Lucy Gray Baird. If anybody's read the book, you'll probably understand why. There are also so many references to like the original storyline. Like there's references to Mockingjay, there's references to Catching Fire. And it just, once you read this book, the whole entire original storyline makes so much more sense. Like obviously the original storyline makes sense and you kind of understand like the whole like point of the series, but the prequel of it, it truly just puts everything into perspective of why everything is the way it is. And it's also very interesting to read this book because we get the narrative of Cornelius Snow, whereas in the original storyline, we only got the point of view of Katniss. Whereas now we get the point of view of, of President Snow. Well, not yet President Snow, but you get what I mean. And it's just, it's so interesting to hear his inner dialogue when it comes to talking about the Hunger Games, living in the capital, talking about the revolution and stuff like that. And at some points in the book, you can kind of sympathize with Snow and like everything that him and his family went through. But then there's also points in the book where you're like, I can't feel bad for you because you are literally a hypocrite and you're doing exactly what you don't like. It was a really good book. It was so, so good. I loved it. I gave it four stars and I highly, highly recommend it. If you guys like the Hunger Games series and the original storyline to it. I highly recommend reading the prequel to it. It'll just tie everything together in my opinion. So anyways, those are all the books that I've read recently. I've been pretty much in a reading slump as of lately, but I'm getting out of it and I'm very excited. So I should be catching up on my reading goal here soon. I hope I'm like 24 books behind, but we'll get there. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. And if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below. And like I said, if you guys are interested in signing up for the special offer that Book of the Month is offering for the romance book titles this week. It'll all be down in the description box below. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys all in my next one. Bye. Guys. I used to take myself out on dates. Open my own damn doors, pay for everything on my plate. Sometimes I'd even get the steak. Cause I got it like that. I always have my own bag, never needed no man to rely on. Got two good shoulders to cry.